Sinestruck. Yeah, this is an odd title for a video, but I'm not sure how else to refer to this particular group of games. Every major console always ends up with these kinds of games that are based on these TV shows that last a season or two and completely vanish off the face of the earth, while the video game lives on. I'm talking about SWAT Cats, Biker Mice from Mars, Stone Protectors, Pirates of Dark Water, Eek the Cat, Ah Real Monsters, and Family Dog. Now, this isn't going to include Disney or Warner Brothers stuff because I feel like they're in their own category, and I'm also not going to include stuff like Ren and Stimpy because because that was far more than a forgotten one-off show. Biker Mice from Mars is a good starting point because it was a show that was very clearly a tag-along show that tried to replicate the formula that made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so popular. There were so many shows like this, from SWAT Cats to Street Sharks to Avenger Penguins, Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Seriously, all of this really happened, despite how dumb they sound. Only a few got games on the SNES though, and thankfully Biker Mice from Mars is really good and absolutely worth playing today if you can find it. It's it's one of the best multiplayer games on the system because it's combat racing. You earn money each race so you can buy better engines and better weapons to make stuff go boom. Biker Mice from Mars is a little unusual at first because it's an isometric viewpoint so steering takes a while to get used to. I'd recommend racing with the big fat guy first because he's got the fastest acceleration. It helps you recover after bumping into everything. But there's a total of six racers to choose from, tons of weapons, and lots of carnage. This game kicks ass. Next we have SWAT Cats, the Radical Squadron. This is a single player only action platformer that's pretty ordinary. You can pick between two characters, one is more powerful while the other is faster and can jump higher, and there's four levels you can pick from the start, so of course you learn which character is best for which level, and you unlock more stages as you progress. This game is hit and miss, it starts out pretty bland and your weapon kinda sucks, but once you level up by killing enemies your weapon thankfully gets a lot better, and some of the later levels get kinda interesting. The boss fights however are a complete slog. So yeah, SWAT Cats Cats isn't that good, but it isn't that bad either. Next we have Stone Protectors. I personally have zero memory of this cartoon, and I at least have a faint memory of every show in this video. I guess that just goes to show the sheer amount of how many of these cartoons were out there. Apparently there was an entire backstory created to accompany these troll dolls. Remember these? So yeah, this game is a co-op beat-em-up, and a pretty good one. The attacks and special moves aren't anything to write home about, but the look of this game, from the colors to the backgrounds to the enemy design, everything's just super weird looking and reminds me of Captain Commando. But if you dropped a whole lot of acid, there's five guys to choose from. There's weapons, all the usual beat-em-up stuff is here, so it's decent. It plays a little slowly though, and there's not enough here to really stand out from the rest of the pack. Pirates of Dark Water is another good co-op beat-em-up. This one's not an acid trip like Stone Protectors, but it's pretty good. It feels a little more streamlined and things move along faster, which is definitely a good thing when it comes to a beat-em-up. So considering this game is also co-op, I'd recommend it over Stone Protectors. Pirates of Dark Water is one of the better SNES beat-em-ups to the point that I should probably give this game its own video someday. You should definitely check it out if you can. Eek the Cat is a weird one. Now, if you're at all familiar with the cartoon, you'll notice one thing right away. That barely looks like Eek the Cat. In fact, this entire game, from the settings to the enemies, what does anything have to do with the cartoon? Turns out this game was originally released for the Amiga, titled Sleepwalker. They just retooled it, barely, to make it an Eek the Cat game. It doesn't help that this game sucks out loud, too. It controls terribly, and every level is an escort mission, where you have to guide some slow-ass computer-controlled character to the end of the level. Avoid this game. Ah, Real Monsters is something I've talked about briefly in the past. It's a little something different since you play as three characters at once that you can switch between at will, and you can even work together to get by whatever obstacle is in your path. Other than that, it's a pretty standard platformer, and it definitely looks unique, for better or for worse. Many of the levels aren't particularly intuitive, though, and occasionally you'll be lost wondering where the heck to go next. Ah, Real Monsters is about on the same level of something like SWAT Cats. It's not bad, but it's not that good, either. Last we have Family Dog. Sadly this game is pretty lousy, but it at least looks like the cartoon it's based on, unlike what we had going on with Eek the Cat. But yeah, that's about all it has going for it. This game has awful controls that feel delayed. Some levels have objectives that the game doesn't even tell you. It's just not good. But hey, if you remember the obscure cartoon Family Dog that lasted for like 8 or 9 episodes in the early 90s, and you're jonesing to play a video game version of it, well then here you go. Alright, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.